it's about 25 to 5 now and it is a Friday afternoon which means most importantly it's time to talk all about money and to do that from Envision Financial Luke Smith joins us good afternoon good afternoon how are we it's a lovely blue sky sunny oh. day today doesn't that oh. put you into a better frame of mind I'll tell you it's just been absolutely delightful it's warm there's no rain a, a, a lovely old lady made me laugh at the petrol station just before it was, you know... It, well, that's a major it, achievement. Somebody <laughs> made you laugh at the petrol station. Given the yeah. price of petrol at the moment, I'm surprised you were able to find anything funny. Well, she she made me laugh that much. I actually went inside and paid for hers after I paid for mine. So, you know, <laughs> if you're that lovely 85-year-old lady that I paid for, then you know what? You have a lovely weekend, sweetheart. That's fantastic. She was golden, you know. Fantastic. Yeah, things are looking good. It's the long weekend as well, so we're all in a mm. good frame of mind. Mm. So today, our, our topic is, what is the investment menu for your super fund? So I suppose yes. it's a little bit like the menu. When you go to the restaurant, you can look down the list of items and start picking and choosing what you think suits you. There you go. And I think you've hit the nail on the head. Let's run with that analogy. Don't work in, walk into a burger shop and complain they don't sell pizza. Oh, okay. I guess. How many times have you seen people do that? Yeah, and look, and that's, that is very, very true of what we're talking about today. And I think this topic for me has been really one that, you know, I've been talking lately and, and one of my most loved clients, Rob, sends me a picture of me in a mini every week and I love it. But I say to people regularly, you could use this fund and not that fund. And the first thing they say is, what, don't you like this fund? No, no, not at all. And the analogy I use is, at 6.4 or 6.5, I don't drive a Mini. That doesn't mean there's anything wrong with Minis. Great little car. They're just not right for me. And when it comes to the investment menu of your super fund, that is exactly what you need to be looking for. Tradies drive utes for a reason. They hurl tools and all the other garbage they have in there for their job. When it comes to buying things in your super fund, people have different interests and different um, objectives that they want to try and achieve. And one of those objectives could be that they really want to buy CBA shares, Macquarie shares, uh, and a fund that exposes them to a certain part of the market. And when it comes to buying those things, the first thing you need to do is look at the options in your fund. So if you do want to buy listed shares, being in a fund that doesn't have them on your investment menu is sort of a problem. As I say, don't go to a burger place and then complain they don't sell pizza. So you need to check the list. The list is simply the approved investment options that the trustee of the super fund, regardless of the fund you're in, has signed off to say that you can invest in them and they've done their due diligence already. That is as, as simple as it gets. We need to keep in mind that not all lists are the same and you really need to look under the hood and make sure that the features and inclusions that you want are in the list and the rules around the list then meet what you need. So are these uh, menus or lists difficult to understand? Do they come no. packed full of jargon? No, not really. What, what you can generally do is you can go to the fund that you're in or any other fund that you're thinking about rolling over to. And on a lot of the websites now, you can go to investment or investment options. And you know if you're in an industry fund that says, right, you can have cash, conservative, balance, balance, growth, growth, high growth and out of this world galactic growth, that's fine. And what you'll then be able to do is go in and see what those things mean. What I do say here is don't assume that the language on the list is the same. And what I'm saying there is after you know being involved in this industry for over 20 years, I don't know what balance means anymore. And I say that to people tongue in cheek, but also with an element of sincerity because for me, Balanced is like a seesaw. You and I sit on a seesaw, yep. we're equal, it's flat. Yeah, you're tall, I'm wide. <laughs> and we end up and we end up level. <laughs> now, if I say, well, I'm gonna look at this balance fund and that balance fund, you need to look under the hood and say, what does it actually invest in? Because depending on the fund you're talking about, it could be that they hold 50% growth and 50% defensive. It could be that they hold 80% growth and 20% defensive yet still use the same balance label. So it's very misleading and a little bit difficult for people to understand, but all they need to do is just click on the option and add up the things that would fall in the growth section. And they would include property, infrastructure, international shares, Australian equities. They're generally those four asset classes will make up your growth component. 
um, and then the balance will generally be of a defensive or fixed interest nature. So check your list, make sure if you want something specific, it's actually on there. Yeah, I think the interesting point about that is that the word itself, the word balanced is obviously being used as a, a marketing tool to sell you an idea, Spine. whereas it's not actually a legally defined category for your investment. So you have to be aware of that. It's quite mm. nebulous and it can mean yes. multiple things to multiple people. Yeah, and, and look, that one is, is nothing more frustrating for people like me that come in and say, well, you know, how do you feel about investment? We do a risk analysis and they say, well, you know, I believe I'm a conservative investor. And then you look at what they're in and they're running 60, 70, 80% growth assets because of the label yes. of the option. You know, the other analogy I use is, if I've got a Hilux and you've got a Hilux and we're driving down the parkway, mm -hmm. if you're doing 140 kilometers in your Hilux I'm and, I'm, the law. And, I, and I'm doing 110, mm -hmm. I can't beat you to where we're going. But we're both in a Hilux, mm -hmm. you're doing a different speed. Yes. Now, you can't measure the quality of the car by saying it's just a Hilux. We need to look at the speed and we need to look at the features. And that's what I mean by, you know, if you're running 80% growth assets, you should outperform a fund running 50% growth assets. Just like a car doing 140 should get to the destination faster than a car doing 100 or 110. But the problem is the car doing 140 is at a greater risk of perhaps going off the road. Exactly right. And as I say to most people, can you talk your way out of a ticket at 160 in a 100 zone? And they go, no, I can't. And a couple of ladies go, ooh, back in the day, I'd have a crack at it. <laughs> and a couple of husbands kick me under the table and we both nod our heads and leave it back. Yes. Um, and if you did 40 in a 100 zone, mm. you'd probably upset everybody behind you. Indeed. And be late getting where you're going. Yes. Now, that is too much cash and fixed interest. So understanding the exposures and the growth that you're taking on with the investment menus that you have in front of you is very important that you don't just look at the label, okay? Because as you said, it's nothing relatively defined and it can be very, very misleading if you don't look under the hood. The other big thing people should look and check is, well, let's say you put a million dollars into a fund and you wanted to buy 100% in Macquarie Bank, for example, right. because you think that's your favorite and that's what all I wanna have in my fund and I understand the risks I'm taking on. A lot of the investment menus in a, in a retail fund or an industry fund will have a limit on the individual exposure that you can maintain. All right. So they might say, of your total portfolio, you can't have more than 20% in X. So depending on the asset class that you want to take on and depending on the investment that you want to use, you need to make sure that you're not, again, thinking that, oh, well, I'll put everything into Macquarie or CBA or whoever, when it actually doesn't allow you under the rules because you won't be able to make those trades and buy those assets. So yeah. look at the weighting restrictions on an investment menu at okay. the same time. So there's a, there's a list of options, but of course those options come with rules Correct. to uh, make sure that you don't uh, exceed you know, your risk profile or whatever the case might be. Yeah. So what should people keep in mind when considering this menu? Yeah, so again, I'd, I'd have an understanding, like I was saying most times, start with why. Why am I looking to change funds or why am I looking to try and investigate another option for my super? If it is that you want to hold individually listed shares uh, or individually held listed shares because you can buy an Australian shares option but then you get whatever's in that pre-fabric well pre-created -pre mix so can I buy what I want to buy are exchange traded funds or ETFs are they on the menu some people really like using ETFs and they're a great vehicle for very very cost effective diversification and to target a certain sector of the market so Using ETFs in your fund in conjunction with some listed shares can keep your investment costs down really, really low and really, really sharp. But again, if they're not available because of the fund that you've chosen to take on, then you may want to look at something that has a few more tools in its toolbox. Um, I'd also then look at the weightings, as we said before. How much can I hold in an individual managed fund? Can I get access to specialised managed funds? In some sectors, it pays to have a specialist actively manage that part of your portfolio because we may or may not have sufficient research or experience in a sector. So you might use a specialised managed fund for certain asset classes. You want to see if they're available. And a good personal super fund will have five, six, seven, eight, nine hundred different investment options. And I'm not talking about a self-managed super fund. I'm talking about using a personal super fund 
but has a really good investment menu. The alternative, say you're in the PSSAP, okay? Standard accumulation fund for the government, has four generic options. That's it. No shares, no ETFs, no listed investment companies, no managed funds. Now, if that fund's right for you, great. But if I'm paying 1% for the privilege of being in a fund, I wanna know that I have access to as much investment flexibility and control as possible so that you can manage your income, you can manage your franking credits and all of those ancillary strategy issues that help you maximise the return and the peace of mind of your super over time. You've spoken a little bit about people that might want to focus on particular individual shares and then you've gone on to mention exchange traded funds, mm. which, which are a terrific instrument. Mm. Why not just focus on the ETFs because they give you such uh, a good exposure to um, the to, to a, a, a well curated or well selected list of equities. Yeah, and again, it's just about how you blend things together. So ETFs can be a great way to run your portfolio that are very, very cost effective. Um, you don't have to mix them with shares. You don't have to mix them with um, specialised managed funds. In some sectors, it's difficult to get an ETF. So in the alternative sector, for example, um, there, there aren't ETFs in that space. Um, there hasn't been until now. Uh, I think beta shares have just released uh, a crypto ETF that is on the mining companies, not the actual. That crypto. sounds that sounds a little bit adventurous. <laughs> well, and again, people also need to keep in mind that you know, whilst product providers can create these opportunities, that doesn't mean they're going to be on your list. Mm. And I think it's only a matter of time before the crypto side of things becomes more accessible. But at the moment, you know, it's 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 in its infancy when it comes to retail investment options, but I think it will get there in the end. But the listed share side of things might be that you want to control the income profile of your investments. You want to control the franking credits generated by a certain portion of your portfolio. So they can be held in isolation. The ETFs can be held in isolation, or you could blend them together to have a really good way of making sure you've got control over the yield of the, the, the account that you manage. Because funding a lot of your retirement pension with distributable income, I find, gives people a lot of peace of mind because they're not really worried about the total value of the fund. After, after becoming aware of the income that their investments are generating, they come in and say, what have we earned this year, not what's it worth? So they're, they're showing to me that they're learning and, and asking better questions. When should you be looking at this menu and how often should you review it? Um, I think it's, it's really, again, it comes down to personal preference. A good menu would suit you for the duration. Um, if you then want to try and explore other options or be a little bit more engaged in what you're doing with your super, then you know lists do evolve. Um, a lot of retail superannuation funds will have an investment committee that may meet once a quarter, um, and they will expand that list as other funds are approved or removed depending on performance. So it's something that is managed by the superannuation funds internally. But I think if you can get into a good personal superannuation fund, if that's what you're looking for, you don't need to jump to a self-managed super fund in some instances. Again, everything has its merit, but you need a fund that is right for you and considering what you want to be involved in and be responsible for. But a good personal super fund will have a very broad investment menu. A lot of people assume that it's you jump from an industry fund to a self-managed super fund. And you know the, the lists in, self, in industry funds are getting a lot better. Um, you know, Australian super will let you have a direct option and some of the others will do the same. So again, you just need to make sure that the features of the fund align with your values and your objectives and you stay in a vehicle that will give you those flexibilities to do what you want to do. I'm with Luke Smith from Envision Financial and today we're talking about the investment menu for your super fund. It's about 11 to five. We'll be back with more in just a moment. About seven minutes to five on two double C with me in the studio, Luke Smith from Envision Financial. Today we're talking about the investment menu for your super fund, and it can seem a little confusing and a little daunting at first, especially Luke, when you said there could be nine hundred options. Yeah, look, exactly. Um, I was just doing an analysis of somebody the other day, and when we did the the sort of the tables of what you were going from and what you're going to, which is one of the requirements that goes into a document these days, 
it actually went from four to I think 960 options. Now, that's not to say you need them all, but hey. It might take you a while to wade, th wade through them and yeah. figure out what's, what's what, but there yeah, you go. Exactly. Exactly. So uh, in the process of reviewing your investment menu, what yeah. are the key things to remember? I think, again, as we said before the break, start with why. What are you looking for and why are you looking to try and change what you have? Can I buy listed shares and what does that include? Can I buy international shares? Is another one that we didn't talk before with the ad break. Is you might be able to buy the ASX 300 biggest companies, but you might not be able to buy Google or Apple directly. Some retail funds will let you do that. So again, ask the question before you get all of your funds rolled over and then find out you can't buy what you want to get. Does it offer a wide range of ETFs and how often is the list updated? Now, a lot of, a lot of fund providers are not going to tell the, the, the retail customer that, but um, you know, check the menu, see if you can get a range of diversified ETFs because in all sectors where they're available, they're a great way to diversify and keep your cost down. Um, remember that performance and investment options are not the same. Okay, so you want to make sure that you're comparing something that is on an apples by apples basis. As we said, if the car's going 140, compare it to another car going 140. Don't compare it to a car doing 100. Um, How can you make that comparison though? Because they use these misleading labels as we discussed already. Balanced doesn't yeah. always mean balanced and it means different things in different funds. So, so how do you make that comparison? So you need to look at the underlying asset allocation and all you do to do that is go to the option that you're in and then you'll see a, a picture of a pizza yes. and then down the side they'll give you the percentage weightings of that pizza. So you want to try and say, let me find a pizza that has 70% growth and I'll compare it to another pizza that's 70% growth. So look at the asset allocation, don't look at the label. So you're talking about a pie chart? Yes. <laughs> you're, you're obsessed with pizza, aren't you? Know, you? My daughter calls it a pizza. <laughs> and what's the, you know, it's a pizza. She also the says pie chart. She also says I'm fat, so maybe I need to get off the pizza. What was this about pizzas and burgers before? I think well, we, what we need to do is we combine the two. We'll invent the pizza burger and we'll take the fast food world by storm. I love it. I yeah, love the it. pizza burger. But yeah, work on a percentage basis. So work up, you know, from a growth perspective, as I said before the ad break, property, infrastructure, international, Australian equities, add up the percentages of those. If that's around 70 or 80, compare something that is 70 or 80 on the other side. Do it by percentage, don't do it by label. Um, and make sure there's a range of specialised managed funds, okay, because there are some areas where it pays to get active advice during times of turmoil like we're seeing at the moment. Yep. So look at the range of specialised managed funds that are available, and that should then give you a very good platform to then go forward and, and decide how you want to mix up your super. Celeste has just told me that the pizza burger has been done already. The Americans beat me to it. So they beat us to most things when the food's involved. So. <laughs> All right, it's that time of the day, Luke. Where can listeners find more information, especially if they want help wading their way through this menu? Exactly. So six two six zero four seven four nine. Give the girls a ring, I think we've got some space in July. Uh, we've got envisionfinancial.com.au, that's Envision with an E. We've got the Knowledge Centre there where there's a raft of information people can access for free. We've got the podcast, The Strategy Stack of Luke Talks Money on iTunes and Spotify. And we've also got the YouTube channel, Envision Financial Canberra, where we've got all of the shows. You can watch it on your iPhone. Key takeouts before and after the ad break and you don't have to read anything. So it's, it's there for everybody. It's, it's fabulous, yes. And of course, these days, it's the modern world. Everything is uh, podcasts and YouTube videos and so forth. It's, uh, it's uh, really um, changed or revolutionised the way we do so many things. Oh, if we don't have to read something, why not sit and listen? I'm, I'm all for it. Exactly. Luke, thanks very much. We'll catch you next Friday. See you next week. Luke Smith from Envision Financial on 2 C. It's about three minutes to five. All the latest news is next.